what we're going to be going over here are some temporary differences between our financial accounting and our tax accounting that are going to result in a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. And our problem is going to be set up here. We're going to be reversing these temporary differences here over a three-year period, and we're going to have a tax rate change during the period. And what we want to do is we want to calculate our deferred taxes our taxes payable here and our tax expense based on these temporary differences that are going to result. And what we're going to do is just step through this here and we're going to just show the mechanics here. We don't want to get lost in the numbers, but we want to show how we'd go about doing this here. So here are going to be our temporary differences. So let's go down and let's look at how we have it set up here. So I've got the financial accounting or our book accounting show and here we're going to have these temporary differences here and we'll go through each of those here. And then uh, for our tax accounting, we're going to also be showing here our temporary differences and make the comparison here to see what's going on. So let's start with our first temporary difference here, which is going to be of a deferred tax liability. So for financial accounting, we're going to have some revenue earned here, $24,000. And it's all, and this total revenue here is recognized in the first year here for financial accounting purposes here. None in years two, X2 and X3 here. So we're going to be looking at a three year period here, year X1. Uh, through year X3 here. So uh, we got the revenue here for financial accounting purposes of $24,000. But if we move down to our tax accounting here, we're, uh, based on that revenue earned here $24,000, we're going to have revenue receipts here uh, spread over a three-year period, $8,000 for the first year here and $8,000 for each of the next two years here. So this is where we're talking about we're going to have a deferred tax liability for tax accounting purposes. So, so you, you can see here for book accounting, we're not going to have a financial accounting. There's going to be no tax consequences here in the years X2 and years X3. But for tax accounting, we're going to recognize $8,000 worth of revenues for each of, the, uh, each of those next two years here. So uh, first for our deferred tax liability. Well, let's look at it. Uh, that would be our future taxable amount times our future tax rate. So really here, our future taxable amount here, uh, based uh, looking at year one is gonna be 8,000 here for each of the next two years, year, year X2 and year X3 here based on tax accounting. So looking at it from these terms, you take your revenue earned here for financial accounting purposes of 24,000 compare it to the revenue receipts here in the first year of 8,000. We go up and look at it. 24,000 minus 8,000 here is going to give us 16,000 dollars in future taxable amounts times the future tax rate. In this case, the, the future tax rate is going to be 40%. For year X1, we're going to actually start with 45%, but uh, these future taxable amounts are for year X2 and year X3. Uh, that's going to be 40%. So 40% times the 16,000 uh, difference here gives us a $6,400 future tax liability. That's where we're going to be, for tax purposes, we're going to be paying uh, on uh, for taxes on these future amounts here, these revenue receipts of $8,000 for each of the next two years. Now looking for our next temporary difference here. It's going to be some expense realized here. For financial accounting purposes, we're going to recognize the entire $15,000 worth of expense here in year X1, nothing in year X2 and year X3. But for Tax accounting, we're going to recognize the expense paid here on that expense realized for financial accounting purposes, 5,000 over each of the next or for each of those three years here. So looking at our deferred tax asset here, well, we take our expense realized here for financial accounting purposes in year X1 of 15,000 compared to our expense paid here in year X1 for tax accounting of 5,000. So we're moving up here, that difference is going to give us 10,000 times a future tax rate here, 40%. So that's going to give us a $4,000 worth of tax life. Uh, asset here. So again, moving down here for a deferred tax asset, you can see what's going on here. You, you, you're going to have a deduct a future deductible amount here of $10,000 for each of these next two years here. So that's how we come up with our deferred tax asset at the beginning of year X1. Now let's just track through it here. Uh, for each of those few years here. for Again, for a future taxable amount for year X1, we calculated that here uh, to be $6,400. Simply the $24,000 here uh, and base of, for 
financial accounting versus our tax accounting of 8,000. The difference gave us 16,000 here, that's future taxable amounts of 8,000 here for each of those two years, times the 40% tax rate. That's the future tax rate. See, for year X1, we're gonna be sitting here at 45%, but those uh, future taxable amounts are going to be based on whatever the future tax rate is out here. And that's 40% for each of those next two years here. So uh, for year X1, we calculated that here future taxable amount was 6,400. Now for year X2, well, what is our future taxable amount here You're looking at year X2? Well, it's only what's taxable here, those revenue receipts for year X3. Okay, so that would be the $8,000 amount here and times 40% tax rate is going to give us a deferred tax liability of 3200 And then looking at year X3, well, we don't have any future uh, taxable amounts here. We've, we've uh, recognized our entire uh, 24000 here over those three years here of $8,000 per year. So uh, for year X3, no future uh, taxable amount, zero amount, and times, so that's going to give us a zero deferred tax liability. So it is important here to determine the change here in our future taxable or de deferred tax liability because that's what we're going to use to determine what our tax expense is. And then for our future deductible amounts, well, we already calculated that here for year X1. Uh, that was the future deductible amounts. We, we, it's really the 5,000 expense paid here in year X2 and 5,000 year in year X3, so 10,000 here times the future tax rate here, 40%, gives us a future deductible amount here of, of deferred tax asset here of $4,000. And then looking at year X2, well, all the thing we have here is that future deductible amount here that we would have in year X3 of uh, 5,000 here, 5,000 times 40% is gonna give us a deferred tax asset here of $2,000. And then for year X3, well, we've used up all our we all are future deductible amounts here based on that temporary difference. There are zero here for year X4, so zero amount here. Uh, that would be what we'd have here in year X3 times whatever our tax rate would be, 40%. SIS is going to give us a deferred tax asset here of zero. So we're here we calculated our future deductible amounts for each of those three years here. Okay, so now let's go down and what we have to do here. What we have to do next is we have to determine the change in our deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. And we can just track through it real quickly here. So for our deferred tax asset, that's our future deductible amount that we've shown here for year X1, 2, and 3 that we calculated here, that 4,000, 2,000. So what we're starting with, let's just go, our beginning balance on our deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability for this example is zero. So for what we would do here for year X1, let's look at a deferred tax asset. We take our beginning amount here in year X1, that was everything starting with zero here, and then we look at deferred tax asset at the end of year X1, well, that was $4,000. We can look at it down here. That's a $4,000 amount. So that what we need to move from the beginning of the year here, zero up to 4,000, is a net increase required in deferred tax tax asset of $4,000. Now looking at uh, year X2 here, looking at the beginning of the year here, well that's simply what we had in our deferred tax asset at the end of uh, year X1 here, that's $4,000. Deferred tax asset at the end of year X2, we can go down and look at that, that was that $2,000 amount. So what we need is a net decrease. Ending Beginning of the year, 4,000, we end up with 2,000 end of the year here, so we have to decrease our deferred tax asset by $2,000. Now. Uh, for year X3 here, well, we start out with what was sitting in a deferred tax asset at the end of year X2. That's the beginning of year X3. That's 2000 And a deferred tax asset, remember, at the end of the, each of those years was zero amount. So, again, we need a, we need a net decrease required of 2000 here in a, for a deferred tax asset. So, that's how we take care of our deferred tax asset here. Now, same thing for deferred tax liability. Let's just go through the mechanics of that real quick quick here. So for a deferred tax liability, that was that future taxable amount. We start out with six, oh, with a 6,400 here, 3,200 here for year X2, and year X3 we had a zero amount. So a beginning of balance, again, was a zero here for the beginning of year X1, zero amount. End of the year we have that 6,400 here. 
dollars worth of deferred tax liability here. So we need a net increase required. We started out with zero. We move up to 6,400. Net increase is, uh, in our deferred tax liability is 6,400. Next year here, deferred tax liability beginning here, uh, X2 is what we ended up with in deferred tax liability into year X1. That was the $6,400. Now the end of the de deferred tax liability into the year here, that was uh, 3,200 here. So we have to move from a beginning balance of 6,400 uh, to uh, 32 here, end of the year. So we need a net decrease required of $3,200. And then for the last uh, uh, year here for deferred tax liability, we are set, we moved from 3,200, the end of X2, that becomes the beginning of year X3, 3,200. End of the year here, deferred tax liability would be zero. So we need a debt net decrease required here of $3,200. So we went through, we had to determine, first off we had to determine what our deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability would have been for each of those years here that, were show, that we originally calculated up above here, future deductible amount here and future taxable amount. Then we had to go and we had to determine the change here in each of those, the deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability for each of those years here, year X1, year X2, and year X3. Okay, so now let's move over here and let's look at this here. This is where we're going to be determining our tax expense here based on our tax payable, the current amount here, and what we would have in our deferred tax asset account and our deferred tax liability account. So first off, let's start with our tax payable here. And what we're going to determine is our tax expense here is going to be a plug here, a balancing amount between our tax payable and our deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability, whatever those changes were. So first of all, our tax payable, and we'll just look at all three years here, we'll have it laid out. So our tax payable is what we would have calculated here for our tax accounting purposes. Remember we had taxable income here for the first year here. Uh, we started out with a revenue minus our expenses here of 160,000 and then we had revenue receipts of 8,000 for that temporary difference and expense paid minus 5,000 here. So our taxable income was 163,000 times the tax rate here, 45% for that first year. That gives us a current amount of our tax payable here, $73,335. So that's what we'd credit our tax payable here, $73,335. That's on our balance sheet here. And then we did that for the next years here, uh, year X2 and year X3, year X2 we had 85,200 and year X3, 37,200. So our tax payable, credit that here for year X2, 85,200, year X3, 37,200. Now, now we move over to our deferred tax asset. Now remember, we started here with a debit amount or an increase in our deferred tax asset of $4,000. You can go back and look at it. That was for year X1. And then what we did with that deferred tax asset, we, it would reverse out here and we had credited or reduced it by $2,000 here in year X2 and $2,000 here in year X3. So net amount here under deferred tax asset is going to be zero. But we, had to, we have to look at this here, the change in a deferred tax asset to defer, determine our tax expense. And then for a deferred tax liability, same thing. For year X1, remember we started out with $6,400 here. Credit our liability, a deferred tax liability of $6,400. And then over the next two years, year X2 and year X3, we reversed it out. We would have used it up here. Deferred we had 3,200 here for year X2 and 3,200 for year X3. So we debit or decrease our deferred tax liability by that amount. So when at the end of those three years here, we got a zero amount here in our deferred tax liability, same as our deferred tax asset. But what we would do here for our tax expense, it's nothing more than a plug between our tax payable amount here and whatever balance is sitting under deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. So let's look at year one here. Uh, where we're going to come up with a debit amount on our tax expense of $75,750. So and that's simply taking our credit here and our deferred tax liability. I've got to lay it out here, $73,350 plus uh, a credit here in our deferred tax liability of $6,400 minus the debit amount here in our deferred tax asset here of $4,000. So the netting those out, we're, uh, netting those out is going to eat, but we're going to need a debit balance here in our tax expense for year X1, $75,000. $750. So it's nothing more than a plug here to de 
determine your deferred tax expense. Just remember your deferred tax asset here, what we started out with a debit amount here, that reduced, is, reduced our tax payable here, the credit amount. And for the deferred tax liability, what we did, we had a credit here, that actually increased our current tax expense. Credit of 6,400 uh, increases our tax uh, payable here, excuse me. So uh, def you know what's going on here. You can just see between your debits and your credits. So the next year here, let's just say, looking at looking at your uh, year X2 here for a tax expense, $84,000. That's simply taking your credit here and your tax payable, 85200 Now you would take, let's see, you would add back, you got a credit here, so you, then you take your deferred tax asset, you have a credit amount here, it's actually a reduction in your deferred tax asset of 2000 but you would add that in here, and then you'd subtract out your deferred tax liability debit amount here, so the debit of 3200 which uh, was reducing your liability here, uh, you subtract that here from your credits of 85,200, uh, uh, your credit here, in your deferred tax asset of 2000 subtract out your debit amount here in deferred tax liability of 3200 so netting those out is going to give you your tax expense here of $84,000 and then just following through the same here for year X3 here 37200 credit uh, plus the credit here which is actually a reduction in deferred tax asset of 2000 minus your debit here of 3200 for your deferred tax liability Netting those out is going to give you $36,000 here in tax expense. So what we did here was the tax expense was really the net amount between our tax payable here. That's the current amount here due the deferred tax asset and your deferred tax liability. Whatever those changes out, netting those amounts out here gives your tax expense. So that's why we had to go and we had to determine the change here in our deferred tax asset from year to year and our deferred tax liability. And we also have to know what our tax payable is from uh, each of those years here. And let's just go back up to that one more time. Our tax payable was really based on our tax accounting here and how those temporary differences were reversing out here each of those years here. We had the future taxable amount here of 8000 for each of those years here. Well, it was 8000 for year X2 and year X3 here. And then deductible amounts, that was that expense paid for tax accounting purpose. Year X2, 5000 and year X3, 5000 And then you net all your, take your revenues and your expenses here in the beginning, less your expenses in the beginning, net and net in, net out your revenue, your temporary differences. You come up with your taxable income here. Take it times the tax rate here. So whatever the tax rate is for the year here, you take it times your taxable income, you're going to get your current tax payable here for each of those years. So that becomes your current amount of your taxes here. So then again, the taking whatever the change is in your deferred tax asset, in your deferred tax liability, you net them against whatever your tax payable amount is here, and then you determine, there you can determine your tax expense that's going to your income statement. So there it is. That's why we had to determine our change here. In our First off, we had to determine what our deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability was, and then we had to determine the change in both of your deferred tax asset and your deferred tax liability. And netting that against your current amount here of tax payable here gave you your tax expense here on your income statement. Just remember your deferred tax asset balance sheet, deferred tax liability on the balance sheet, tax payable as a liability account here on the balance sheet. Okay, so that's about how you'd go in a lot of mechan a lot of numbers here to go through, but at least this is the mechanics that you have to follow through when you're looking at these temporary differences that result in deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities and how they re reverse over the three-year period based on your financial accounting and your tax accounting. And we also had incorporated just the change in our tax rate. So just remember here, when you're working with your deferred tax asset here, you're taking your future deductible amounts times your future tax rate. And then for your deferred tax liability, you're taking your future taxable amounts times your future tax rate. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic here. Went through a lot of numbers here, but if you, ha you have to track through them here and go th through them in this fashion, determine what your, uh, each of those amounts here to determine what your tax expense is.